Ok, buongiorno, eh, mi presento, io sono Domenico Centrone, faccio parte del, dello staff di Laboratori dal Basso e innanzitutto vi do il benvenuto per, uh, a questo laboratorio e ringrazio sicuramente l'associazione West uh, Anna in qualità di, di project manager e naturalmente i docenti che hanno accettato l'invito e, e sono qui, con oggi, qui oggi con noi. E, um, niente, vorrei giusto spendere due parole su quella che è l'iniziativa um, diciamo di Laboratori dal Basso così da capire anche il perché oggi uh, siamo e uh, siete qui. Qui. La Laboratorio dal Basso è un'azione sperimentale della Regione Puglia che è nata circa un annetto fa, un annetto e mezzo fa, il cui obiettivo è, ehm, diciamo così come descritto dal, dal nome stesso, Laboratorio dal Basso, è quello di creare dei veri e propri percorsi di apprendimento, quindi dei laboratori dal basso, quindi dalle associazioni o dalle microimprese operative nel, sul territorio pugliese che sulla base dei propri bisogni di apprendimento e facendo diciamo, un cluster con altre realtà eh, diciamo, presenti sul territorio identificano dei veri e propri percorsi eh, di formazione e di apprendimento basati per l'appunto sulle proprie esigenze. Quindi identificano le tematiche, identificano anche i docenti e le modalità formative. Quello che l'arti fa è semplicemente portare qui sul territorio questi docenti affinché per l'appunto vengano a portare la propria esperienza, la propria conoscenza sul territorio a beneficio per l'appunto dei proponenti ma di tutti gli interessati agli argomenti dei laboratori. Diciamo, il laboratorio dal basso è un'azione che si declina in tre ehm, sottoazioni, per l'appunto laboratori, che è quello che vi ho appena descritto, poi ci sono le testimonianze e poi ci sono i percorsi di mentoring. Testimonianze sono, ehm, diciamo, noi li chiamiamo i, i cicchetti di laboratori, cioè sono incontri brevi, one shot, in cui ehm, per l'appunto vengono invitati dei relatori che abbiano fatto qualcosa di rilevante nel campo dell'innovazione e dell'imprenditoria, applicata a qualunque settore, vengono qui sul territorio per l'appunto a portare la propria esperienza quindi incontri brevi di un'ora a due ore ci possono essere anche cicli di testimonianze con più relatori ma diciamo sono percorsi meno strutturati rispetto ai laboratori che sono dei veri e propri percorsi di apprendimento strutturati su più diciamo, giornate e più incontri la terza iniziativa invece è l'iniziativa di mentoring in cui per l'appunto l'obiettivo è quello di affiancare una persona uh, senior, una persona che abbia già maturato una determinata esperienza nello stesso settore della giovane, uh, diciamo, della giovane idea, quindi della giovane realtà dell'associazione o, della, o della microimpresa. Quindi l'obiettivo è quello di uh, diciamo, far beneficiare la giovane realtà della conoscenza di chi ha già maturato un certo percorso, una certa esperienza. Attualmente le azioni di laboratori e di testimonianze, sono le, i due avvisi sono, sono chiusi, adesso si stanno realizzando tutti eh, i laboratori che sono stati diciamo, eh, presentati dai, dai ragazzi, entro il 30 novembre ci saranno tutti i laboratori, si concluderanno tutti i laboratori, mentre l'iniziativa di, eh, di mentoring è ancora attiva. Quindi per ogni formazione comunque potete uh, fare riferimento a quelli che sono i nostri canali istituzionali che è il sito di laboratoriodalbasso.it piuttosto che la nostra pagina Facebook oppure ci potete contattare anche su Skype o uh, per telefono. Uh, ci saranno ancora molti laboratori fino al 30 novembre quindi l'invito veramente a seguire oltre che uh, questo laboratorio anche le nostre pagine, la nostra, i nostri canali proprio per individuare eventuali altri laboratori di vostro interesse. Per qualunque informazione ci potete contattare, niente che dire, io vi auguro un buon laboratorio e grazie per essere qui. Passo la parola ad Anna che è la referente del laboratorio. Grazie. Grazie mille Domenico, io sono Anna Santomauro e sono cofondatrice e co-curatrice di Vessel insieme a Viviana Checchia, poi nel corso degli, degli anni eh, insomma, il nostro team si è andato allargando e ehm, sono intervenuti eh, altri, altri operatori, altri appunto, eh, operatori culturali che hanno appunto rimpolpato il, il, il nostro team. E Vessel nasce nel, nel 2011 grazie al fondo Principi Attivi, 
appunto emanato dalla, dalla Regione Puglia e l'obiettivo con cui nasce Vessel è quello di indagare i processi culturali, i processi artistici, ehm, ponendo maggiore enfasi appunto sulle, sulle dinamiche di, di, di creazione artistica e culturale piuttosto che eh, sulla produzione eh, in senso stretto e l'esposizione di, eh, di opere. Quindi da, fin dall'inizio c'è stato un forte interesse nei confronti dei, dei processi piuttosto che del appunto dei, dei prodotti eh, d'arte. Negli ultimi tre anni abbiamo indaga, indagato diversi ruoli, le diverse dinamiche che sono alla base del sistema dell'arte e della cultura, mantenendo un interesse sia a livello eh, locale, regionale, quindi eh, ponendo le nostre radici in Puglia, che a livello internazionale, quindi abbiamo cercato di eh, mantenere un dialogo molto, molto forte con il, il panorama internazionale quindi diverse organizzazioni, diversi operatori che eh, ehm, appunto abbiamo invitato, a, eh, a, che abbiamo invitato ad essere parte del, dei, dei nostri progetti e dei, dei nostri programmi, proprio perché il nostro interesse è quello di attivare un dialogo fra eh, il contesto locale e quello, e quello più internazionale. E, in questi anni abbiamo analizzato anche diversi ruoli, le diverse metodologie che sono alla base delle pratiche più eh, contemporanee legate al, alla processualità e eh, alla relazionalità e, mh, abbiamo insomma, insomma, analizzato la figura del curatore, abbiamo in, analizzato eh, attraverso i nostri progetti il ruolo delle istituzioni artistiche e culturali nel, nella società contemporanea e nell'ultimo anno abbiamo sviluppato un forte interesse nei confronti della, eh, delle pratiche, le, delle cosiddette pratiche sociali, eh, ovvero di quelle pratiche pratiche artistiche e culturali che sono eh, in dialogo con la sfera pubblica e che appunto eh, hanno l'obiettivo di costruire un, eh, un forte dialogo con la sfera pubblica e che esulano eh, diciamo, la, 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 la mera dimensione della rappresentazione per eh, dedicarsi a una forma di intervento attivo nel, nella società. E si tratta per lo più di pratiche partecipative, ehm, multidisciplinari, eh, processuali e eh, collaborative. Quindi il senso di questo laboratorio è appunto quello di soffermarci ehm, a riflettere su, mh, sul reale senso di, di, di tali pratiche e eh, sulla loro efficacia e sulla possibilità di queste pratiche di rappresentare nuovi modelli più sostenibili di, di fare arte e fare cultura. Quindi apriamo il laboratorio con eh, Gemma Medina, eh, Gemma è eh, storica dell'arte e ricercatrice presso il Vanabe Museum, e, è parte del meraviglioso team di Arte Util che è un progetto eh, iniziato dall'artista Tania Brughera ma che ha allargato il proprio network nel, negli ultimi due, due anni eh, appunto coinvolgendo il Queen's Museum of Art e il, il Vanabe Museum con i suoi eh, operatori. Quindi insomma io darei eh, il via al laboratorio e passerei la parola a Gemma. Grazie. Ok, first I want to, to express my gratitude because I'm really pleased to be here. So I want to thank especially RT for inviting me and the Fessel and, uh, and of course uh, Domenico, Anna and Andrea that are here present. Um, it's really nice to, to be here uh, and be part of this uh, Laboratori del Basso, the Laboratori della Pratica Sociale. <laughs> Uh, because, in fact, um, what we have been working on the last uh, two years is about a kind of social practice that uh, completely related with the art is Arte Util. And uh, Arte Util uh, say that, uh, as I wrote in the, in the little text that I wrote about this, these lessons, is an art practice that uh, tries to imagine, create and implement uh, social, uh, socially beneficial outcomes. And um, what uh, we want to tell you is a little bit, uh, as this is about social practice, we would like to, to share with you how uh, the art 
is going to the social and uh, specifically uh, this is something that is happening for a uh, already long time and now is uh, maybe the moment to, to start to, to talk about it and to call it like uh, put it a name because it has uh, has been a lot of names during the history about this kind of uh, art practices. And now that is uh, quite the moment when it's uh, more powerful and you can see it everywhere, we have decided to call it uh, like uh, Arte Util. And why? Let me explain you why. Uh, we use uh, the words Arte Util mainly because uh, in English it should be translated like useful art or beneficial art. But in Spanish, the, the word útil means uh, tool as well. So it's two different uh, meanings that we want to, to put together. Because it's not just that this uh, kind of practice that results útil, let's say useful for the society, but at the same time, uh, uh, the main objective of this kind of practice is to give tools to the society. To, to start to imagine, to create, and develop these, these social uh, beneficial outcomes. And um, let's say that um, it's a kind of practice that is not uh, uh, to produce uh, an object, as we were talking about. It's not a kind of a traditional form of art, but it's more about uh, um, think about the process itself, and think about uh, the uh, implementation of this process and the beneficial outcomes that you can get, no? And um, let's say that if we imagine uh, there are a lot of artists in this practice that they talk about their own work as us. Could you imagine if uh, instead of using the, the normal materials, let's say, uh, the paintings and uh, uh, to, to make a beautiful drawing or whatever, uh, they use really the reality uh, nowadays to produce the work. So uh, it's really, I think, uh, that it's really a kind of art practice that are social practice. And in fact, uh, uh, their main um, definition, as I just used to, to define Arte Util, is uh, a kind of social practice when the artists are really going out of the frame of the art world, the traditional frame, to go through the society and to try to give them, the society, beneficial outcomes and solutions, concrete solutions for concrete problems. So, as Tania Bruguera says, uh, it's like see the art in upside down. So, the A of art becomes in the E of util. So Arte Util is making upside down art. I like it this a lot. <laughs> so this is a beautiful definition of Tania Bruguera. She said, uh, all art is useful, yes. But the usefulness we are talking about is the immersion of art directly into society with all its resources. We need to focus on the quality of exchange between art and its audience. Arte Util moves beyond a propositional format into one that actively creates, develops, and implements new functionalities to benefit society at, la at large. And it is because uh, at the very beginning when we start to talk about Arte Util, we got a lot of reactions like, uh, but what are you talking about? Are you, talking that, are you telling me that the rest of the art is not util? Is not useful? So that's not at all what we want to say. It's just trying to define this kind of, of practices that are more uh, practical, are really thinking in the practical beneficial outcomes. That doesn't mean that the rest of art is not useful. Come on. <laughs> we cannot say that, I mean. Uh, so let me explain you uh, uh, the history of this project. Artiudil is um, a long-term project, a long-term strategy. Tania Bruguera is an artist that uh, she's, I don't know if you know her, she's a Cuban artist and she's a performa performance and uh, she's comple completely engaged with the political and the social during her whole career. And um, she has been uh, researching about the idea of Arte Util for a long time uh, because she really thinks that um, the art has uh, the the power and the position to give back to the society 
what the society gives to the artists just to permit them uh, to be artists. So she's really, uh, let's say, grateful. She feels really grateful with the society uh, in that way. And she really thinks that it's necessary that the art start to think about the society in a different way. So um, actually, um, the, the idea of Arte Util starts, uh, she starts to talk about it in, the, in 2003. And when she started with the, uh, with the Catedra de Arte de Conducta, let's say, um, the, um, uh, Cated the Behavior Academy in, in La Habana, in Cuba, where uh, she works with a lot of artists about performance and uh, this kind of, of engagement with the society. And she proposed and she worked directly with some artists uh, that uh, learn how to develop this kind of practice. Now some of them are the most... Uh, representative uh, practitioners of Arte Uti, let's say, as Nuria Well, you will see uh, later. And um, in 2011, uh, she uh, presented the Arte Util concert at Immigrant Movement International and uh, its inaugural event. And uh, what is Immigrant Movement International? It's a, actually it's a project that Tanya has been develop, developing in, in New York with the Queen's Museum of Art in New York. And um, it's about uh, immigrants, but uh, what she has been doing is to try to really respond the needs of the real needs of the immigrant community there in Queens. And uh, what she has, uh, has done is uh, to offer a huge range of services, but mainly uh, oriented to give the immigrants uh, support and advice about their rights and about their position in the American society. And at the same time, uh, something that happens is that it, is, it starts to becoming like a social center, a meeting center, and a learning center. So at the end, it's a kind of really um, uh, support, advice, or place for, for all the legal issues. Uh, but apart, it's uh, becoming like a, a really place where the people is going to, to learn English or really uh, uh, basic education, but uh, even uh, like... Um, um, activities about the healthy, you know, healthy food, cooking, and of course, a lot of, of, of um, uh, professional skills like photography or this kind of activities that improve uh, completely their, their, their lives. So uh, she starts in, in 2010 with this project, and uh, let's say that uh, she didn't feel at the beginning as an art util project because uh, as a lot of art util projects, uh, could you imagine, and a social project itself, needs a lot of time to really progress and to, to get the beneficial outcomes. So when we start to research about art util, she always told me that uh, she, didn't, yeah, she didn't see the uh, Immigrant Movement International as an art util project. But now we can, we can say <laughs> that yes, because they already have got a lot of, of beneficial outcomes and even there have been participants in the project that already got the nationality in the U.S. because of their, their work together. So they are, now she's really proud and she said that it's okay now. It's starting to be an art activity project. So here you can see this, what I mentioned in this, this conversation about art util and uh, uh, Tania Bruguera is the girl with the, with the red scar. <laughs> so, and what happened uh, with the Van Abbey Museum where I'm working with? What happened basically is that Charles Esch, the director, he invited Tania to make a solo show in our museum. And Tania uh, immediately thought, uh, no, actually I don't want to do a solo show. I don't want to show just my work. Actually, what I want to do is to, to promote this kind of practice from an institution that can give them some uh, credibility and uh, legitimate uh, this movement that has been happening for a long time. And I uh, really want to, to start to think about it as a movement, an artist movement. And I really want to, you know, to, to start discussions about this kind of movements. And, uh, 
she thought that it could be an amazing idea to connect all these people that is working all around the world with this kind of practice and uh, to give them like a kind of a network or possibility to establish a new network that could bring us oh sorry more more beneficial even outcomes from the practitioners to to start to share their strategies to share their resources so um, she decided that she wants to, to transform the Fanavi Museum in the Museum of Arte Util. And uh, actually, uh, the team from Fanavi just loved the idea because it, uh, it means a lot of things together. Uh, for um, a moment, we decided that we really want to do, and that's, that's something that Tanya asked about uh, to do a huge research, trying to do a, a historical research as a museum, as a classic institution, no? like the classic uh, function of the museum, no? to make a historical, art historical research and to bring all the, the examples together and to propose this kind of, 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 of um, way through the history to tell about this kind of practice. And at a certain point, uh, we decided that we really wanted to do to play a role of the classical museum. But at the same time, it was uh, all the time from the very beginning, uh, what m the, m the most attractive idea was uh, the discussion and to really bring out these practices in the, in the actuality and to put it in the, in a, in a museum and uh, to see how, uh, even as institutions, how challenging it was to imagine how to bring this kind of practice into the museum. And on the other side, how challenging is for the, the public and how challenging is for, for the, even the art practitioners, that there are a lot of, that they are completely walking a part of the institutions because it is the kind of practice that are not related with the institutions in a certain way. So we decided to start with the Museum of Arte Util in 2012, and I came there to work with Tania, and uh, uh, we have been um, building uh, this archive of, of case studies. We, we were trying to, to develop it uh, yeah, as much as we can. But uh, that's something that is, that is uh, I think, that is uh, marvelous of this project is that uh, even now it's not finished. So the, this archive of projects, I will tell you later, but this is going to, to keep growing. Okay. And as the last step of until now <laughs> for the Arte Util is uh, the idea that Tanya had from the very beginning that uh, she really wants to develop an Arte Util association. So after the exhibition that is happening at the Banabe from the 7th December until the 30th of March, um, all the Arte Util practitioners uh, will become part of this uh, Arte Util association and probably there will be a lot of more discussions and events and uh, let's see what the association is going to do. Okay, so um, about the Arte Util, Museum of Arte Util. As I told you, have been uh, making this research. Uh, nowadays, we have uh, 500 case studies uh, from all over the world. We have built uh, this archive um, that at the beginning was uh, built in a really, really simple way to try to define the projects as simple as possible. And uh, yeah, the classification was uh, very, very simple at the very beginning because it was something that we don't know how big it's going to be and uh, how we are going to use it. And we didn't want it to close any possibility of, of, uh, you know, for, for any kind of professional. We really wanted to, to do something really like a tool for, for different uh, fields of study. So we did it really simple. and. Um, and then we start to think uh, well uh, during the process. Uh, this kind of practice is really uh, different, it's showing a different way to see the art. And it's really something that uh, we are talking about different works and we are using different works and the language is completely different. So maybe we have to think about the lexicon. So we start to think about the lexicon in relation with this kind of practice. And we invite, uh, during the whole the process, we have been trying to invite all the time different uh, specialists to talk about the, uh, any issue. So with the lexicon at that moment, we came up with, uh, with a Stephen Wright 
that uh, he's a uh, theoretical professor and uh, he's really uh, has been working for a long, long time about the issue of, uh, of usership. And uh, yeah, he has been working with us about the lexicon. And then we decide, okay, we have to have a website. So we build a very simple two website. That's something that is already on, but this is growing and it's going to be better, let's say. <laughs> we have to, to keep the improvements. And then we decide, okay, uh, how can we uh, walk through the, how can we know if in Africa or I mean in Asia, they are developing this kind of practice? We cannot. No, so we decided to invite the um, uh, 25 advisory boards, 25 specialists all over the world, trying to, to connect all the geographies at least uh, a little bit. It's impossible to, to think all of, of that we are, we are covering all, all the world. It's impossible. But at least to try to, you know, to track if there were some, some projects there. So we invite these this amazing uh, specialists and uh, curators, uh, researchers, and uh, we, we got an, uh, a lot of discussions with them and uh, something that I was yesterday uh, telling to Anna and Claudia that uh, we now even can think about the art duty like a kind of geographical, in a geographical way, because we can now make a kind of, you know, uh, mm, parallelism between what is happening in Europe, let's say, and uh, in some parts of Asia, or think about Australia, or think about, at least we can start to, to, know, to track the movement all around the world. This is just the beginning, as I told you. Um, then um, we make an international open call of projects, because, I mean, so we make this uh, eFlux uh, open call and uh, we ask uh, everyone to send us a project that they could feel like Arte Util. And uh, in fact, we even, th even said uh, it, doesn't to, it hasn't to be uh, the artist who is sending the, the application. If you are, uh, I mean, a practitioner, a social worker or something, just a citizen that they, you know about the project that you feel that could be Arte Util, please send it to us, no? So at the end, we got like 375 projects. Not all were Arte Util, but there were some interesting cases, let's say, and at least Again, we start to, to, you know, to throw in the ball. So again, everybody start to talk about uh, Arte Util and uh, this crazy idea of Tania Bruguera to talk about uh, <laughs> in combination with the Fanave, the experimental Fanave, to make this, uh, this kind of, of exhibition. So then we, um, again, from the very beginning, we have been related with the Queen's Museum because Tania was based there, working with international move and international, the, in Queens, so um, uh, we decide that uh, we want to work with them from the very beginning about the Arte Util idea, and uh, let's say that we said, uh, let's do first an, a lab in New York, in the Queens, and then we can do uh, later the exhibition at the Panave. So we did the lab there, and it uh, was uh, pretty interesting because uh, there were a lot of, of Arte Util practitioners, let's say the artists invited to tell about their projects and uh, they made these open um, uh, workshops so and they divided in groups and they were, were working with four, four uh, hypo hypotheses. Uh, two of them I would like to work with you tomorrow. Uh, but um, all around this concept of Arte Util. And of course, after that, we have done workshops, uh, public and academic uh, uh, presentations and debates. Because um, as here, what we really want to do all the time is, is to discuss about it and to think about this kind of practice. And uh, now, it's almost, we are almost there. Uh, we have the exhibition that is coming and it's starting on the 7th of December and it's going to be until 13 March next year. So, how we define the arte util? Because it's, it's quite a extensive uh, uh, word, no? And uh, from the very beginning, we said it's completely impossible to, to make a definition, uh, at least at that moment. Now I think that we, can, we could do it uh, more easily. But at the, the very beginning, we decided that we should say it was like, uh, oh no, we, we know what, what is not arte util, okay? So let's do a kind of criteria 
or a list of pro propositions that we think that the, that the art hotel should, should fit with. So we developed uh, this kind of criteria, and there was like uh, the first one is uh, it should propose the project should propose new uses for art within society. So this is because we really think that uh, Art Util what is doing mainly is to inspire, you know, and to show the society how could how could be differently. So if you are uh, making it, um, but you are e using the, let's say, the traditional ways of the arts, uh, the traditional language, you are really not the uh, waking up, <laughs> the imagination, let's say. So this is like a, one of the, most, the, the most important points, is like you really have to go out, you know, the, the formal frames of art. The second one is uh, challenge the field within which it operates. That is uh, what we are talking about. We are all the time thinking, you have to think in an artist that uh, he's not trying to, to be a lawyer, and he's not trying to be a social worker. What he's doing is trying to work with a lawyer and work with a social worker, no? To think uh, together about the concrete problem. So concrete situation. So usually what happens is uh, that the artists, as they don't have this uh, professional uh, knowledge and they don't have this professional academic um, background. Uh, what they used to do is be artists. And the, what is an artist doing all the time is thinking out of the box. It's, it's thinking differently and proposing new ways of do the things. So mainly when the artists are working with the Arte Util, they are bringing uh, crazy solutions that the professionals sometimes feel like, what, what? But then uh, a lot of times it, 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 it results that it's, it's a good solution. So they are really challenging the fields where they are operating. Uh, the third the criteria is be timing specific, responding to current urgencies. That is uh, important because, as we said, uh, it's not the uh, Arte Util wants to to bring uh, you know a solution for the poverty, or to bring something like a really huge or or to propose an, a completely new society. No, what Arte Util is doing all the time is just uh, working with uh, concrete context and concrete. Uh, people and uh, groups and uh, communities and uh, and they are what they are trying to do is just to bring mm, a little small but uh, but uh, effective effective solution so they are really they have to be really um, connected with what is happening it's not though we think that uh, that Arte Util is not for example if you are doing um, a project to you know to improve I don't know the design of a room or whatever. Could be if at that moment this room needs to be redesigned because you really have a problem with that room. You know? <laughs> but otherwise not. Not general solutions. Has to be really connected with the with the real. And the fourth one is this is super important. It has to be implemented implemented and function in real situations. What it means? It means that Arte Util wants to go uh, further than the utopic propositions. And it's, it's going to, it's, it means that it, it has to really um, function in at least once, okay? Because there are projects that uh, we have in the archive and uh, that the artists have developed a solution and that, that it works, but uh, for for many different reasons, it's, it's not taken by the society, okay? Like a solution that they can use. But at least they, they gave the idea and it works. So that's what I mean, that uh, it cannot be something that you imagine and you just, you know, propose, like maybe in a better future. No, it has to be really, really uh, well done. And that's something that uh, with the open call was not very well because a lot of people send proposals about uh, great ideas, proposals of great ideas, but we said, no, but actually we really need something that you already have done, you know? We really need uh, something real. 
Okay, the five is uh, replace authors with initiators and spectators with users. And this again in relation with the lexicon that we were talking about. Because uh, that happens and I suppose that uh, it's not new if we are thinking about the social practice. Uh, the concept of uh, authorship is uh, completely disappearing because um, uh, the artist has to deal with the idea that uh, probably his project is, is going to be uh, used. I mean, the people that is, is working with, he, with him is part of the, of the project itself, and it be, they became authors too, if you think about it. And uh, they uh, became the owners of the project after the artist left. And that happen, uh, happens a lot. If it's a good project, it's a well done and well developed, the ideal and, and what makes us more happy <laughs> about it is like uh, a lot of art utility projects has been taken by the society. So now they are not more art. They are not more art. They are real projects working in the society. And then some, that is something that um, it's tricky for the artist itself because it's playing a lot with their position of, of as artist, and I think that it's really challenging for them because it's really a kind of a, I don't know unselfish. <laughs> I don't know how to call it, but it's a kind of really go against what an artist used to be. But um, they are doing pretty well. I mean, there are a lot of artists that they are, they are managing this, this well. There are other artists that it's something super interesting to analyze too, because there are other artists that they are uh, trying to develop the project until a certain point, and then they decide to leave it. There are artists that from the very beginning, they know that they, nobody is going to you know, remember them, but uh, they really want to do because of the beneficial outcome that is bringing to the community. And there are a lot of artists that even they are working with the, with the neighborhoods and all the participants, the neighbors, they say, this is art? For me, not. For me, it's just something that I can enjoy or use in a good way. So um, I don't care if it's art or not, no? And that happens then again with the spectators and the users. Then the art util is not looking for, for public for people that's coming to see the object or to see the process. They're looking really for people that wants to, to do something, to, to participate, to, to take the idea and implement it. Or, so we are talking all the time about users and about initiators. And the, sec the sixth uh, criteria is uh, have practical, beneficial outcomes for its users. That is super important. And it's super simple, but it's the main point. Because, um, as I said, uh, the word of useful, and even in Spanish, util, is super um, big. You can talk about uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, the uses of art. And actually, this is something that this Apanavi is starting to do. <laughs> uh, but um, in fact, there are a lot of different uh, readings about lectures about this. So we decide that to really keep it uh, framed, framed and to keep it simple, uh, Arte Util has to, be, to have practical, practical beneficial outcomes. And that uh, keeps apart uh, all kind of, of arts that is giving a lot of, of emotional or, or psychological or a lot of benef the beneficial outcomes that came from the arts normally. But uh, not the practical, not the practical ones, no. And uh, the seventh is that, uh, and this is important for I think for this uh, laboratory, is that uh, Arte Util has to pursue sustainability, whilst adapting to changing conditions, and that's something that uh, we define it in relation with the future of the projects. How a project, how a project can can go, can goes on, no, can continue, and uh, how the artist uh, can uh, trying to to define this continuity from the beginning, or what can they do to get the solution to to keep it, you know, working. It's quite difficult because it implies, uh, yeah, fundraising. It implies. Uh, Networking, it implies a lot of things that uh, that 
Yeah, artists should think from the very beginning. It's not something that, uh, that is happening after the project is done and the people decide, oh, that's a great project, let's, let's keep it. No, that is good, it's good, okay. But uh, if it's art util from the very beginning, they should think about it. How they want to, to keep the project going on, even after the, art, the artist is leaving. And uh, the last one, and the most uh, theoric, theoretical and tricky one, is that uh, uh, the art util should uh, reestablish uh, aesthetics as a source of transformation. And it's more about to trying to think again about the arts as a co completely uh, tool for transformation of the world. You know? And uh, really recuperate this feeling of the art as kind of, of key to open you know, the imagination and to change the things. And I, I forgot to tell you, if you want to ask uh, anything, you can interrupt me, it's okay. So, a part of all of this, I have to tell you that, of course, we, we are not thinking that art util is something that uh, appears just spontaneously. It's a completely as a social uh, practice, it's completely in relation with, with the context and with a lot of movements that has been before, and even the artistic movements, social movements, and the uh, reality that is happening through the history. And um, we thought that it's uh, easy to understand the concept of arte util if we think about the um, about that this it has been connected with a lot of of, of concepts that we already go for. And let's say that, for example, um, arte util, of course, is completely connected with social engaged art. That is one of the last names that the arte util receives before. So when the artist went out and really wants to change something in the society. But it's not just that. Arte util is connected with the with the political art too. Because uh, in a certain point, art util, and there's something that uh, we have been discussing a lot, art util is not uh, mm, willing to improve the, the system. It's not willing to improve the political established uh, media, or it's not, um, um, it's not focused in, 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 let's say, improve the neoliberalism. It's really, really uh, completely opposite. What Arte Util tries to do a lot is, is criticize the situation, no? And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's art. It's, it still is art. So we are talking really to, you know, to try to to change the things, so it's really political art too. But the part, it's the institutional critique, because it's not uh, something that is, uh, I mean, until now, let's say that this year we have uh, had a lot of exhibitions in relation with this kind of practices. But uh, if you think in uh, ten, 10 years ago, it was quite difficult. So let's say that the, the institutions have been for a long, long time really part of the, this kind of practices. And the, the artistic institutions, of course, because it's like a, they are like a traditional uh, form of uh, to do the things. And the, the social practice and the art and the engaged art is not part of it. But a part of the institutions, political institutions, uh, Municipal institutions, all kinds of structures that uh, that are uh, driving our lives, and uh, the art util really wants to to criticize that. And then we have, of course, of course the activists. It's uh, really related because it's like, um, yeah, you will see there are a lot of projects that are collaborations between activists and artists, and the, if, even they have this amazing uh, concept that is art activism. No, that's something that is happening now. So, and uh, the social innovation, because of course it's all the time trying to change the things in the society. And uh, of course uh, the art util is using a lot uh, the culture of uh, do-it-yourself do and uh, this uh, all kind of alternative economies and uh, 
for sure what is now normal for all of us that the social media and the virtual networks that are making these movements possible. And then um, we really have to think about the lexicon again, no? Just to to comprehend, uh, to understand the term of art util. Um, as we said before, we have to to change all the um, traditional language. So, especially for the critics, for the art historians, for the you know, it's like uh, anyone that has to write about this kind of social practice uh, should uh, change their language in a way because it's not the same to write about a painting or photography and of course it's not the same to talk about uh, these kind of practices. So in a simple, very simple way, let's say, as I told you before, that the author is not more the author, it's going to be the initiator. And uh, the artwork it's not more the ad work. We are talking all the time about case studies because we are like still researching these kind of practices and we really want to analyze them. And then about the production of a normal artwork, let's say, uh, we have not more production, we have implementation. And uh, the audience, of course, as I told you before, it's like a, uh, the public is the users and the audience is, are the activators. Without activators, the project is not working. And the distribution, the traditional ways of distribution of the art works are becoming a network of experience. So as I told you before, that uh, one of the, the, um, the main objectives of the art deal is this art deal association to really try to develop this network. And uh, about the conservation of the, the art works. We are not talking more about uh, the storage. We are talking about sustainability, how the projects uh, can keep going. And uh, as I told you, uh, the aesthetics uh, are going to be more uh, related with the ethics of the aesthetics, no? that are completely inside of this kind of practices, because you are, you working, if you are working with the reality, you are working with the ethics and the people and uh, opinions and different uh, position in, positions again so, or in favor of different uh, situations. And uh, let's say that uh, from the art theoretical perspective, we uh, change the, ac the action of look at for the action of to do something. So it's what I told you before, the user is not more uh, an spectator. We, the art theoretical is not uh, yeah, it's not uh, waiting for people that is coming to see. They really want to, to, to work with people that wants to do something. And the, the museum or the art space, it's now the civic society. Where are these projects? These projects are in the street, are not in the museum. And the representation, the traditional representation of the, uh, the artworks, it's now the presentation of the projects, that is something that is super tricky, <laughs> I can tell, <laughs> for the exhibition that we are uh, now working on. And it's really, really difficult to present these projects because uh, everything, yeah, all the people that is working around this, they, are, they say that at a certain point you just start to be really bored bore and uh, you know, tired to see so many pictures with a lot of people because it's what the, the you have at the end of the projects. A lot of mm, your beautif beautiful pictures. The people working or just hanging together and uh, smiling is great, but uh, hello. A lot of things happen during the process, not just that. It's really difficult. And then uh, we are going out the art, the art wall. So the traditional experts culture, it's becoming now the citizens culture and uh, the experience uses, no? so the users that are really more in relation. Okay, and now, um, I don't know how time is it, because I thought that, that there was a good moment to, to take a break, I don't know, what do you feel about it? Yes, let's take, yes, let's take a 10 minutes break. Okay. okay. <laughs>